Hi friends! Welcome to episode 28 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Um, I am coming to you today from my home in Central Florida and today is Tuesday, February 27th. Yes, February 27th. Um, I have a couple things to talk about. Um, some making, some crafting, knitting, sewing, good stuff like that. So let's jump right in. Um, actually brought something to drink with me today. You don't need it. I have my little mug that, <laughs> little mug, not a little mug. This is a mug my best friend Amber gave me like a few years ago. And um, I do love it quite a lot. I am drinking a, what am I drinking? Chai tea latte. Um, this past Saturday was my birthday. So pretty much anytime I purchased anything like over the last week, I'm like, it's my birthday. I would like this. So I bought myself some, some mix for the, or I think it's called Oregon Trail, Oregon Chai. I don't know, I might be lying, but it's my favorite chai latte mix. And um, got, got a little container of the powder, the instant powder, mix in some water and some milk, good to go. I had like this much when I started, like, at the beginning of like writing up my show notes and finishing my show notes and everything and I'm down to like here but it's so yummy fun fact the first time I had a chai tea latte was in um, Huntsville Alabama at this Mediterranean restaurant called JMO's if you find yourself in Huntsville Alabama JMO's on Jordan Lane it's delightful teeny tiny shop like mom and pop shop mom and pop restaurant but it's so delightful back to the crafting or not even back to the crafting because we never even made it into the crafting to the crafting so first we'll start with things that are all done the first I am wearing this is my uh, sheepy tank it is a refashion that I did out of um, a what do you call it a pajama top that I got from Walmart and I super simple laid it out on the floor put a tank top that I like the fit of on top of it traced around that tank top cut it out um, I used I was gonna use a zigzag stitch um, because it's like a knit fabric but I I kind of went on an exploration of my sewing machine and um, my sewing machine has like a bunch of um, stretchy seam options so I decided to go with this one that kind of looks like a straight stitch but it's really like three stitches side by side so the stitches run like this and I liked how it stretched and how it looked on this particular fabric so um, it has like a high-low hem and I will insert a little video so that you can see it um, but like putting this together took me maybe a couple hours not definitely not more than two hours like the longest the longest part I think of this whole refashion project was really picking the stitch that I was gonna do that took a while because I I wanted to exp like use each stitch I got like from the extra parts that I cut off and I was going through each stitch seeing how it worked seeing how it stretched some of them when you stretch the fabric out you could see um, like the the seam and I didn't really like that so um, that took a while but the whole like laying it out cutting it out pinning it um, super easy super quick one thing I did do different um, the oh those aren't even look at that this is the second time I've worn this and I just now noticed that but um, 
Huh, gotta fix that. So, in the original, in the original tank top that I traced, the armholes went down to like here, and I didn't like that. So, I traced it just as the garment was, and then I put it on and like pinched and pinned. Obviously, didn't do a good job because these don't match. But all I have to do to adjust that is just pin this one in a little bit and then sew, um, sew right there and that'll cinch that up to, to match with the other one. But it's super comfy. Um, the high-low hem, it's shaped kind of like an A-line shape with a high-low hem. Um, just, I'm definitely going to be doing this again. I think the next time I do this, um, it's going to be completely from scratch so I'll be purchasing some fabric and um, trying my hand at making a tank top from scratch um, so with that I will have to do the neckline detailing so that makes me a little nervous to do this without a pattern or anything but we'll figure it out um, yeah so that's the first finished object the next finished object is a skirt that originally was going to be a dress. So um, a couple episodes ago, there's Miss Tootie is sitting on my lap. You probably can't, no, you can't see her. There she is. Hello, you loud ruffian. A couple episodes ago, I was talking about how I wanted to make a dress for my birthday. Um, and I had cut out the pieces for the skirt only to discover that I did not have enough fabric for the entire um, the entire dress. So then I cut out contrasting fabric and a solid brown for the bodice. And the pieces sat for weeks and weeks. And I kept looking at them and just like, eh, I don't feel like working on it. Um, and then last week, I was like, okay, Kalisha, you need to make this dress because you wanted to have a special dress to wear to church on your birthday. So um, I looked at, at the fabric and I just decided that the brown on top was just not doing it for me. Um, it wasn't making me happy. It made me feel like, I, like this was a cop out. Like it, like it made it look like I, I ran out of fabric and I was just trying to make it work. And I didn't want a dress that just like make it work on my birthday. I wanted it to be like right. So I decided to, instead of doing a full dress, to just nix the top and make a skirt. And I am so glad that I went with the skirt option because I love it. And it came out to be midi length, so like halfway on my shin and I love the color. I did a gathered skirt, so it has um, a lot of fabric in it. Um, the waistband was really nice. Originally, I made the waistband really wide, and then when I finished the dress and I tried it on, it was way too wide for my body. So I ended up just, instead of picking the whole thing apart, um, I just folded the, the waistband in on itself, sewed around that, and just called it a day and it fits wonderfully um it wasn't like you know how sometimes you have a skirt that fits you great at the beginning of the day and then like you eat and you feel like you have on a corset from ye olden years um this was not that so it fit great at the beginning of the day it fit great after eating delightful so much thumbs up on this dress Thumbs up for the skirt? Thumbs up for the skirt? Tootie, I'm, I'm not here to pet you right now. I'm not. I'm not gonna pet you. Your breath stinks. <laughs> so let me let you see the skirt. Here it is. And 
I love it. I love the color. That pop of, of the neon yellow is just so great. And then I used that as the accent for the zipper. And go figure, I had a zipper that perfectly matches that. So as you can see, and I'll show you the secrets, I just flipped it inside. <laughs> I just folded it over and sewed it down. And yeah. And it just, it makes me so happy. Um, I'll put in a picture of me wearing it. Um, I got lots of compliments on it, which, you know, made me happy as well. Um, but I'm definitely going to be making more skirts in this length. Um, I don't tend to wear things that are shorter, like, than my knees. I like my knees to be covered. Um, so having this skirt that comes down, like, T-length or midi length whatever you want to call it, so halfway down my shin, that's like just the right length for me. Um, so if I can't do, I do want to do another floor length skirt. So like the black and kente one that I did a couple weeks ago. I want to do another one like that just so that I have the two floor length dresses or skirts. And then I definitely want to do a couple more like this. I was actually talking to one of my friends and saying like, I kind of feel like making a bunch of African print skirts and having that just be my my church wardrobe that might happen so yeah that was a delight um, the next thing that I finished Friday night in order for him to wear it to church on Sabbath was a tie for Lamar and yes this is from the um, the Kente inspired print that they sell at Joann's. And all I did, just, you know, your regular necktie. All I did was I got one of his old ties. I gutted it. Um, if you take like a regular necktie and you take it apart and like seam rip all the seams, you have three pieces. So I just, well, you have three body pieces and then two lining pieces that go in the tips. And then you have, um, like a not stuffing and it's not interfacing it's just kind of like padding that goes inside the tie so um, I reused the padding in here and then what I did with the pieces I ironed them flat and then I just cut around them with a seam allowance and just kind of winged it from there um, he wore it to church on Sabbath and it looked really good on him. I think we took a picture. We probably didn't take a picture because even though I'm a photographer, I forget to take pictures on special days like that. Um, oh, no, 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 we do have a picture, so I will put that in. Um, funny thing about this though, I last year made a skirt for my friend Tiffany out of the same fabric which she wore to church on Sabbath. So Tiffany and Lamar were matching. Um, and I also had um, one of my bags that I made out of this. So there was a whole lot of this fabric running around in the church on Sabbath. But um, my father-in-law complimented me on that necktie and he actually asked me if I'd be able to make ties for their male, male chorus for next year which would be pretty cool um, I will have to find like where I can purchase a bunch of like tie padding because I kind of don't want to buy like 20 thrift store ties just for their guts you know but that took me less than an hour, like from from ripping up the existing tie, tracing it out, cutting it out, and sewing it together. Eh, probably an hour. Give us a, give an hour, because there were a couple points I had to figure out, like how I was supposed to do it. Um, but it came together quite nicely, and I'm super excited about that. So 
that's all of the finished objects that I have to show you. There is one last finished object. It was a commission skirt that I made for um, one of the girls in the choir that I sing in at church. She asked me to make her um, like an African print skirt. So I made that for her and I'll put in a picture here. It looked really good on her, um, and of course when she wore that to church, so it was me, her, and my friend Tiffany that all had skirts on that I had made. So um, some of the other ladies were like, oh my goodness, you know, Kalisha, can you make me a skirt? So it just made me feel like, like I know these are things that I can do, but it's, it's a special feeling when someone specifically asks you to make them something does that make sense? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But, um, so yeah. It was just like, you give me your measurements. I'll send you pictures of the fabric. I'll send you the pricing. And then, why don't you pay for the skirt? I'll get to making. But, that's all of my finished objects. And we'll move right along to works in progress. Now, the first work in progress, you will not be surprised. It is yet and still <sighs> the devil snare socks but I have um, I feel like I've picked up speed with them just because I've gotten to that point where I'm just like okay I want these socks I, I want to wear the socks I want them to be done let's let's get moving so here's the progress that I have on the second sock I have three repeats all finished um, of the lace pattern and I think I'm doing eight on the whole foot or the foot on the leg eight no either eight or six on the leg let's consult pattern repeats on the leg do da do da pattern repeats on the leg oh do da day six all right so I'm halfway there halfway down the leg then bust in the heel and hopefully zoom down the foot which last episode I was talking about the fit of the first sock so I ripped the toe back and I went back to I believe 65 stitches um, or 65 stitches 65 rounds instead of the regular 75 that I do because the sock just worked out super big and knit the toe back in and um, it's too short now. So when I realized it was too short, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do the second sock and we'll come back to that. So, <laughs> y'all, my sock knitting has just been a struggle bus. I think those pie socks jinxed me. But, um, so this one, I'm going to knit the foot to 70 rows. My normal is 75, so I'm gonna knit to 70 rows and then put the toe on, and that should be just right. And then after I finish that, I can wear the 65 row one, it's just a little bit tight. So I might, I don't know, I'm either going to block the bejesus out of it, or just add in the extra five rows. One of them, one of them, one of them. So if this is your first time watching, this is, like I said, the Devil Snare Sock Pattern by Erica Luter. I am knitting it on my 2.25 Chowgu Red Lace Needles. This yarn is Happy Fuzzy Yarn in the Tree Frog colorway on the Cory Sock Base. So this is 75% Superwash Cordale, 25% Nylon. So yeah, that's that. Moving right along. I would love to have this done by next episode. Just, I need them to be done. My next work in progress are these. I started it on the, tw no, I started on the 24th. So I started these on my birthday. Um, just a vanilla sock, 64 stitches, 2.25 needles. Um, this yarn that I'll be using for the Definitely the, t the cuffs and toes, maybe t maybe cuffs, heels and toes, 
is Knit Pick Stroll in the Sour Apple colorway, I believe. And then the body is um, Red Heart, Heart and Soul in the Jelly Beans colorway. So I've already knit a pair of socks out of the Jelly Beans colorway. Um, they were my experiment socks when I wanted to see how much sock I could get out of only 50, 50 grams. Um, so I really liked how that colorway worked up. So since I had another 50 gram ball, I decided let's put in contrast um, toes and cuffs and have like longer socks so that I, so that they're more comfortable for me because I don't really like shorty socks. Know thyself. So um, these were my weekend knitting and I'm really enjoying them. Uh, that's my second work in progress. I love those colors together. And I think that's all I have for works in progress. I did want to mention this one. This was my, was going to be an afterthought, afterthought heel sock that I was knitting. Um, it was just not bringing me joy. Like, every time I went to pick it up, I was just like, uh, I don't really feel like knitting on it. Like, the colors are not making me particularly happy. So I snatched the needles out, and it's going to be frogged. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to make out of this, because I do have 100 grams of this yarn, so two 50-gram balls. Not entirely sure what I'm going to do with it, but um, we'll see. So that is being frogged. And we'll stick all of that back in my handy dandy bag. So that's all of my uh, works in progress. Um, it seems like I have been, like in my, when I write out my show notes, I have a section called maker plans and then I have a section called stash positions. But what has, what seems to have been happening recently is that even though I write them up separately, I talk about them together. So, yeah. We're gonna go on into maker plans and stash positions. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, my birthday was this past Saturday, and um, I've been doing a little treating of myself. Um, and, It was also my mom's birthday. So yesterday I went to one of my local yarn shops because I had a birthday coupon to use. And why not go get yourself birthday yarn? <laughs> but while I was in there, I did find some yarn that I wanna make something for my mom. Um, and so I, had, I found two options. So I gave her a call. I said, okay, you have this one or this one. And she picked this yarn, which is Ba Manhattan. Now I have never used Ba yarn before. And this one is 70% Merino and 30% Cashmere. I've also never used Cashmere because it's always been like, you know, out of my price range. So, but not so. This one just so happened to be in the clearance section for 40% off. So, yes please. <laughs> so I got this. It's a beautiful like red burgundy and you know my mom's favorite color is red if I didn't mention that before. But I think what I'm going to do because this is a fingering weight, I think I'm going to hold it double so that it'll be like a sport DK weight and um, I'm thinking about knitting her like a because she will, she'll, she'll wear, um, she wears hats a lot. Um, she's not really a shawl type of gal. And um, I wanted to give her something that she could use more often. Um, so I'm thinking that a nice cabled hat would be, is gonna be the way to go. Um, yeah. I'm really excited to use this. It's super soft and squishy. 
and it was the only one there so I'm really excited so I get to use this it the color is Burmese Ruby and my mom will get a nice hat I told her I said okay this is gonna be for your birthday but you're probably not gonna get it till Mother's Day but you know how I do and she was like yes I know so there's that and um, I found a cable pattern or a cable hat pattern that I like but I'm really leaning towards just doing my own thing um, I've got a few stitch dictionaries with cables and stuff in them so I am pretty confident that I can create um, a hat that is unique for my mom and shows off this beautiful color and that she will like so that's that and that's the only thing that I have in maker plans that cable hat for my mom um, so the rest of, of the stuff that I have in this little bag um, are my little stash quisitions. So they're living in my black tie optional bag that I got from SeaWorld. Um, Lamar and I went to SeaWorld on Sunday uh, for my birthday celebration. It was my first time going to SeaWorld. It was awesome. Talk about it later. So what I got for myself from Nick with my birthday coupon is this skein of Malabrigo Machita in the Frank Ochre colorway. So it's this beautiful golden yellow and it is a single ply. So when I was looking at it, I was looking at all of the Machita and I really wanted something yellow. And I was like, well, I don't have anything to go with that. And then I remembered this yarn that was so graciously given to me so this is, oh, I just lost it. Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the crumble colorway. So this is also a single. So I've got two singles. And I think those are going to go together wonderfully. Um, I'm thinking about doing some sort of shawl with this. Um, just because I do love my shawls. And I only have one fingering weight shawl right now, which is my um, syncopated, what is it, syncopated bees shawl. And um, I think I want, that one is like a like traditional triangle shape. I think I want one that's gonna be maybe a little bit wider and not as deep. So we'll see what this will grow up to be, but I just love those together. So if you have any suggestions or ideas for patterns that I can use um, for these, leave them down below. So that was my birthday yarn. The next thing that I got for myself for my birthday are a couple enamel pins and they are from Tea Turtle. Um, I came across Tea Turtle like on Instagram. like. I'm pretty sure it was either in my explore tab or one of those like posts that comes like suggested for you but they sell super cute enamel pens and they are five dollars and they are larger than I was expecting for five dollars so I got this one which says I love crafting it's a little octopus and I got this one it says introvert aren't they so cute oh oh fingers come on there you go so adorable so adorable so I've got those I'm excited about adding them to my collection and I think I want to say the shipping was three dollars on these and they have a whole bunch of really cute designs. Um, there's this one that is a unicorn, and it says, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing already, but it's a unicorn, and he's looking all angry, and he has like a knife.
tied to his horn and it says, I will cut you. And I was like, oh, look at the angry unicorn. <laughs> so yeah, if that's something you might be interested in, take a look. Um, you can find, they're just tea turtle on Instagram. So that, I think that's everything that I purchased outside of like my souvenirs from um, SeaWorld, which I will show you in just a second. But I did get a lovely birthday present from my friend Cherie. And she said, she said, I bought this for you because I thought you could put yarn in it. That's a good friend, y'all. Look at it. And it comes with yarn. <laughs> so it's a huge bag. It's got pockets and all kinds of stuff. And she said um, when she was went to the, the register at the store where she purchased this, the person, like the cashier, was like, oh, what a nice beach bag. And she was like, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I get to put all the yarns in it. But um, it is super cute and I should probably like I can probably bring this to church on Sabbath that might be a little bit big we'll figure it out so yeah so that's that was my birthday gift from my friend Cherie I love it and she was like you can even change out those tassels because I don't know if those are your colors I'm like I love it it's so like what's the word boho is that what it is anyway so that was a lovely birthday gift and now I will show you my souvenirs from SeaWorld um, the first souvenir I guess you can call it a souvenir two to get down no no get off you can't be up here you don't have act right. You don't have sit still. First souvenir, my shopping bag. Um, I got it for the penguin. Um, there's a penguin ride that we went on, and at the end, we saw like all the little penguins, and they are so cute. I feel like I've never seen a penguin in real life before. They are so cute <laughs> with their little waddling selves. Um, I'll see if I can, you know, insert some video or, or something like that as, as I talk about the different things, um, when I talk about the, the actual trip in a minute. But I bought another pin. This one just says SeaWorld with the dolphins. Um, yeah, I, I took the the Pottermore Patronus quiz like a few years ago and it said my Patronus is a dolphin and I totally forgot about that until we got to SeaWorld we were, we were like in the watching the Dolphin Day show and I just remembered I was like my Patronus is a dolphin so of course I had to get the one with the dolphin on it plus the Dolphin Day show was so much fun to watch I really enjoyed it and I also got this little orca Side note, this is going to make me sound like a doofus, but I didn't know Shamu was a killer whale. I don't know what I thought Shamu was, but I know that it was not a killer whale that I thought Shamu was. I think maybe I thought Shamu was a beluga whale. <laughs> I don't know. Where I got that idea, who knows. But yeah, I got myself a baby Shamu. Hello, baby Shamu. Oh, I put them away. I got, trying to figure out how to hold these. Lamar and I were walking through the souvenir shop and out of the corner of my eye, I spot this table of um, charm bracelet charms. So I got these, a little penguin and a little dolphin one. And progress keepers, yes please. So I got these, and I really like them. They were on my uh, 
my new jelly bean socks. So, yeah. So like whenever you go to like a theme park and you're wa and you go through like their souvenir shops or whatever like that, um, if they have those like charm bracelet things, it's a progress keeper. So the last bit that I have of my souvenir slash things that I got at SeaWorld are these. And they are my new pressed pennies. Um, I collect pressed pennies. I get really excited about it. When we walked into SeaWorld, the first thing I saw was like a pressed penny machine. And then we went around the corner and there were like five in a row. And I was just like, I've made it to the holy grail of pressed penny land. It's paradise. I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Give me all the all the quarters and the pennies. I'm about to light it up. So um, the only one that I got that was just kind of like a miscellaneous, I just wanted it because it was kind of cool, is this one. It is, oh, you can't, oh yeah, you can see it. It's um, a mermaid. I believe she's playing a harp. Yes, it's a mermaid playing a harp. I just thought that one was pretty cool, so I got it. All the rest of them were specific to things that we did on the trip. So, the first one I got were these. Yeah, I got this one, which is like a SeaWorld logo. Not even really a logo, it's just SeaWorld, and it has um, a Shamu, an orca on it. And then this one, which way is up? This way. Um, these are the ones that I got when we first walked into the park. So it just says SeaWorld and has like the diving um, marine life. So there's a couple different animals in there. Next, we went to Dolphin Days. And when we came out of there, actually, the next penny I got was Dolphin Days. I have that dolphin one and that dolphin one. Look at his little face. Um, then the next one I got was this one. Uh oh, penny down. It says, I touched a ray at SeaWorld. Yeah. Which I did. I touched a stingray. It's kind of gross. It did not feel like I was expecting it to feel. I think I was expecting, because it looks kind of leathery, I was expecting something leathery. It was definitely slimy. It was like, ah! Like I touched it and I was like, oh, this is, this is not a good idea. <laughs> So I got that one, and um, then we went into the aquarium, and I saw the seahorses. So I got that one with a seahorse on it, and we rode the, what was that ride called? Mako? It's either Mako or Mako. I don't know how to pronounce that. But we rode that roller coaster. It was amazing. I enjoyed it so much. Um, so we got the one with the shark on it. So that is my new collection of pressed pennies. Um, I wanted to get one with a penguin on it, but the machine um, by the penguin ride that had the penguin pattern was broken and we checked all the rest of the machines on our way out of the park and no other one had a penguin so sad days in Kalisha land um yeah so that's everything that i purchased everything that i got for stash positions so we will move right on to black fibers black threads today's person that i want to talk about in black fibers black threads is an individual by the name of lorna hamilton brown yes Lorna Hamilton Brown. She is a maker who is located in the UK and um, she actually did her dissertation um, on basically debunking the myth that black people don't knit. 
I came across um, her and her work um, whilst looking for um, anything written about black people in knitting, like any um, folk tales, poetry, um, essays, etc. And her dissertation came up. Well, notice of her dissertation came up. So um, I reached out to her and asked her if there was anywhere that I could actually read her dissertation, and she so kindly sent me the link. So I was able to read it, and there were a couple points that um, I found very interesting. Um, a lot of what she was saying branches from basically the need for representation, at least I, I understood it to branch from the need for representation. And um, the need for um, the contributions or the activity of the black community within the fiber community to be passed on. So one of the things that she pointed out was the concept of um, white gaze, which basically, in a nutshell, is the idea that because the majority of people talking about the thing are white, then what is going to be presented will be a lot of whiteness, which makes sense. If the majority of the people were black, then what would be presented from their perspective would be a lot more blackness. So um, with that in mind, um, she goes to reach out and find black people doing things in the knitting community. Um, she researches the history of knitting, looking up um, what black people were doing with knitting and things like that. Um, one of the other interesting things that she found um, while she was doing her research and that she brought up in her dissertation was a conversation that she had with, um, I think it was a an older Jamaican lady. Yes, I can't remember her name. I want to say it was Madge. That could be true. That could. Be, uh, uh. Anyway, um, she said she was speaking to um, this lady about how she learned to knit. Um, what was it like? How did what did it, what did she use and things like that? And she found out that um, one of the tools that were used. Um, when this lady was younger, were called, um, they knitted with um, coconut bone, which was the center spine of the coconut leaf. And so she said what they would do would strip that, that center spine and they would treat it with beeswax and they would use those as their knitting needles. And one of the things that she pointed out with that information was that that was something that she had never come across in her research of things that had been written down. And she said that right there is a perfect example of why the oral tradition is important. And you can definitely see how if, like say, if she had never spoken to this lady and the lady had never shared that information with any anyone else or any you know younger knitters or anything like that. That detail um, of that experience within knitting could easily be lost. So that made me think about um, like me learning to knit and crochet. Like my mother taught me how to crochet when I was in middle school, and she was like, "Oh yeah, I can teach you how to crochet." She taught me how to do the double crochet and she was showing me how to do popcorn stitches and bobbles and all of these things. And these are things that I had never seen my mom do before. So it was a, a skill that I did not know that she had. So um, flash forward like years, like a couple years back from now, um, I had gone to Delaware and I was visiting my family for Christmas and I decided that I wanted to go on a yarn crawl to like the different shops around Delaware. And in one of those shops, I brought my mom with me, in one of those shops there was a like sock in progress on needles to show you how this particular yarn knit up. And she picked up the needles and started knitting on the sock. Now I'm standing there looking like a crazy person because I'm looking at my mom who is knitting and I did not know she knew how to knit. 
And she goes, oh yeah, I know how to knit. Really? And like I said, these are, these are things that I did not know she knew how to do. I had no inclination. Like there was no hint that she knew how to do this. Even, even though at that time I had been knitting for almost a full year, um, she never made mention that she knew how to knit. So these are definitely things like conversations that I want to have with her. Like, how did you learn how to knit? Who taught you how to knit? Was this something that um, you saw your mother or your grandmother doing? You know, because you can connect experience like that. And for me, um, not knowing that that was something that my mom knew how to do, when I decided I wanted to learn how to knit, I went to the internet. Like, let me learn how to knit on YouTube. And of course, I'm not seeing people that look like me at all. Um, so I had that, that feeling like, um, that very other feeling, um, you know, where, where I'm stepping into an arena that's not mine, you know, that, that my people don't go to. And that's not true. And um, so that made me think about how different my experience as a new knitter would have been if, if I had known, like if I had been able to knit from my mom, then it wouldn't have been like, I'm going it all by myself, you know? So that definitely reinvigorated my desire to be a point of representation going forward. You know, like, like, yes, I'm black. Yes, I knit. Yes, I'm black. Yes, I crochet. You know, I do these things. It's not new. It's not weird. It's not not black. It's not a white thing. You know, all of those things, chop them down. But um, these are all the, all the feelings that I was processing through whilst reading um, Lorna's dissertation. So I definitely have a lot of conversation that I want to have with my mother and my grandmother to see if, you know, if these are, if these are things that were in their household. And um, I'm really excited to kind of explore that. So I think the biggest takeaway that I had after reading um, Lorna's dissertation was the importance of sharing my experience experiences as a black knitter um, and using the platform that I have chosen being this this craft cast um, if ever I get back into blogging that blog um, using that to um, to show other people like hey these are some um, designers that are working um, these are some yarn dyers, you know, basically like making sure that the people that are out there and that are doing the work and are, are creating in this area um, are seen. Um, because it's, it's very easy to assume that if you do not see a certain type of person doing a certain thing, it's very easy to assume that they don't do that thing. So. Um, I definitely want to do my part in in squashing that myth. Um, so I really, I'm really glad that I was able to um, come across her work. She's also done some really interesting um, performance pieces. Um, she does a lot about. Um, like she does a lot of social commentary. Um, right now she's working on a piece, I don't remember if it's a movie that she's putting together called um, Knitting the Blues, but she is approaching it in a way for, a, a way to explore how knitting, um, how knitting can be helpful when it comes to anxiety and depression and things like that, which I'm very interested to see how she, you know, approaches that, um, because I, def I mean, I've, I've talked about this before. 
um, how much knitting and crochet and like doing things with my hands um, calms me and keeps me from feeling anxious. Um, so I'm very, I'm very interested to see this project as it comes together. Um, I will put her Instagram and website and everything in the down bar so if you want to take a look at her feed, um, see some of the, um, the displays that she has put up, the, um, the productions she's, she's come up with, and the concepts, um, definitely check her out. So the last section that I want to uh, share with you is just some life stuff. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, my birthday just passed. I am now 32. Huzzah! That was my one, one, one woman wave. 32! Um, and we had, my birthday was on Saturday, so after church we had a Sabbath dinner, like a birthday dinner for me, which was really nice. Um, Lamar made a delicious macaroni and cheese. And he also made me a cheesecake, which was great. It was very good, um, which is funny because he doesn't like cheesecake. So that was pretty cool. Um, after that, Saturday night, we came home, we watched TV. Um, and then Sunday, we went to SeaWorld. And, um, Last year, one of my friends told me that I wasn't a real Floridian because I had never been to SeaWorld. So I am happy to say that I am now a real Floridian. Um, we saw, like, when we, we got into the park, we didn't go when, when they opened, which was our original plan, but we need to stop playing games with ourselves and saying that we're gonna go to parks when they open because we never go when they open. We just kind of like mosey in whenever. So, um, when we first got there, the first thing that we did, we went straight to the um, the sea lion and otter show, which was pretty cool. Um, at the end of the sea lion show, they had like a walrus come out who was supposed to be like the superintendent because it was like a high school. But this walrus came out and I didn't even know what animal it was. <laughs> All I was just like was, oh my gosh, whatever that thing is, it's huge. Like, the thing was huge. There is there is something to be said about how big animals seem on TV, and then when you see them in real life, good night. But, um, yeah, so we saw that show. It was pretty cool. From there, we went to... Did we go straight to Dolphin Days? Yeah, I think we went straight to Dolphin Days, which was my favorite show out of all of them. Um, and then we rode the three roller coasters. The first one we rode was Manta. I can't remember the second one. And then the third one we rode was um, Mako. But of all of them, Mako was the best. Um, we really, really enjoyed it. Um, we got in the line for the Atlantis ride, but that thing was like 45 minutes long, and we were like, mm, no. So we got out of that line and went to um, experience some other things. We saw the Shamu show, the One Ocean show, which was pretty cool. Um, what else did we do? We rode the penguin ride and saw the penguins at the end. Um, we went at the end of the ride when you leave out, you see like all the penguins in their little habitat, and then you can walk out and look at their underwater area. There is this one penguin that was like dancing with the stars. Like, this penguin was amazing. He was jumping in the water, like doing all this fancy footwork and then jumping out of the water, jumping back in. Like, he took the show. He stole the show and and couldn't nobody tell him nothing. <laughs> um, what else did we do? I don't know. I can't even remember. I'll put some video footage and stuff at the end. But um, 
I had such a great time. Like, I felt like a little kid. Um, like, it was so much fun. Um, it was so cool to see the animals, to learn about the different animals, um, and like to get to see them up close. Um, I mentioned earlier that we touched the stingray. I mean, I would do it again, but it was still gross. Like, ew. Um, we did not get to um, look at the, like go in the shark um, like experience where you can go see them like closer because by the time we got on that side of the park, that um, ride was, or that, attraction was closed um but it was a lot of fun i'm so glad that we got to go um I think that's everything I wanted to share with you guys. So with that, I will sign off. I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, if you want to leave a comment down below of something positive or something great that happened to you this week, something that brought you joy um, so that we can all um, experience it with you. Um, if you also want to, you can subscribe to know to get notice or notification when I next upload. I have I'm very proud of myself for being so far on it for like a whole month with doing one podcast a week. It's getting easier as I go, um, but yeah. Thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment of something uh, that brought you joy this week, and have a great week. Bye.